a very good morning and welcome back to the channel first of all apologies it has been a little while since i've last uploaded and as you can see i'm adjoining the croatia shirt in celebration of perisic signing for tottenham but apart from that we're going to get back into the horse racing tips selections previews and all of that thing over the next couple of weeks and especially because we've got some very good action we've got the derby this weekend and royal ascot is just around the corner too and I thought what better way to get back into the action than trying to land a big play spot just for a little bit of fun really just some small stakes and hopefully have a nice little buzz over the afternoon hopefully get a few legs in before ultimately it all comes crashing down like it always seems to do in the play spot but there's some very tricky race in this afternoon I've decided to target the Hamilton card for the first six races which is quite a tricky play spot to be honest and the first dose is usually one that if you stumble upon it's just a pain so I usually go for two lines in the play spot and pick two horses in the first race and in the first race the 126 I think Coco Jack is maybe opposable as the favourite is one that might be finishing outside the frame it'll be nice to get a favourite beat early on in the play spot now this horse ran at windsor just a couple of weeks ago i think it was two weeks 11 days ago and he did some nice late work at the end of the day but i just got a feeling that he was running past beaten horses at the end of the day the form of that worse has been a little bit mixed since then so i think this horse might just be opposable and i'll be taking on him on with two horses the first one is kind spirit for Mark Johnston and Jason Hart who do very well when teaming up they had a couple of winners at Beverly the other day now this horse ran a pretty good race on debut at Chelmsford City it wasn't too bad wasn't beaten too far into second and then it probably didn't improve from the run at this course at Hamilton and it was beaten about three lengths Joe Fanning rode that day and it just seemed to be a little bit one pace. I think the key to this horse is the step up to six furlongs. I think the extra furlong in trip should suit and he's a solid Mark Johnston trier. I love backing Mark Johnston horses. They always seem to give it their all. Jason Hart is a very good jockey as well. Good does well when teaming up with Mark Johnston. So at four to one he would be one to take on the favourite with. And the other one would be trained by Ian Jardine, a trainer that I'll be siding with a few times today, Spuesatora, I think it's called, who's had already the three runs, might be one for handicaps down the line, but also ran in the same race of kind spirit, which I think was a pretty decent race. The second legend of Xanadu has bolted up next time out, and JM Jungle also ran well at Beverly in the two-year-old condition stakes. That was a pretty good Worse as well, so I think the form of this race will work out. So I'll be siding with number six and number three in the first race. Hopefully, get one or both in the form to carry on the play spot. Moving on to the 201, and we've got a very short favour, and I don't even think it's worth taking on Parasic. Parasayak. I've got Perisic in my head after he signed for Tottenham, but I think this horse is just by far and away the best horse in the race and should be winning this. Or else I'd be very, very surprised and there'd be something wrong with the horse if it finished out of the top three places for sure. It ran its last race was in a listed contest at Doncaster where it was sent off a big price but it was a very good race. Flaming Rib was the winner for Tom Dascom. That's a useful horse and it was only beaten two or three lengths at the end of the day. I think Graham Lee is a pretty good jockey. He's a jockey and warming too. He's a pretty decent jockey on the flat and I think he'll just keep it simple over the six furlong trip and he should be winning this is a significant dropping class and should be getting on the ball to carry our place but over to the third leg where I'm a gambler is the three to one favour was very impressive at Beverly just a couple of days ago I said to a friend watching it at the time if this horse gets to the front he's going to be tough to beat but he blew the start was in mid division but came with a very strong and late run one going away over the seven furlongs they'll drop back to six furlongs wouldn't be too much of a concern he's won over six furlongs here in the sunday series at hamilton just a couple of weeks ago but the big question mark with this horse is can he back up recent performances is a very big horse and i think his racing might take a little bit more out of him you wouldn't think he was a three-year-old looking at the horse and looking back 
at his form. When he's won and been turned out very quickly, he has been disappointing. And for that reason, I think he's opposable. He might be on that look. He could easily go and win this race. He's unarguably well handicapped. But you just think for the play spot, he's probably going to win or he might be underperforming quite significantly and probably out of the back. So for that reason, I'm going to take him on with the Kevin Ryan trained Rathburn, who is a six-year-old and is pretty consistent and off a mark of 91. There might just be a little bit more to come. He's had the three runs this season, started off sixth in a pretty strong race at Redco. He needed the run that day, stepped forward significantly when winning at Doncaster, off a mark of 87. Then he backed it up when just beaten a short head at Thirsk off a night mark of 89 is two pounds higher today but Oshin McSweeney takes off a very valuable bit of weight and I can see this horse running into the four I minutes mean, of pretty strong race in fair I also think strike ride could run well for Richard Fahey but Rathburn would be the third leg of the place pop for me now moving on to the fourth race hopefully we'll still be in it at this point but I think Poet's Dawn, who is favourite at the time of filming, is quite opposable because he's one that seems like there's going to be a big run around the corner. I thought it'd be two runs ago when he was well gambled on at Beverly off a mark of 76. He didn't really show anything that day and he wasn't that much of a better run at Beverly again when admittedly he did drift out in the market with Bond and Wilkie riding a claiming jockey but he didn't really show that much day, that much that day. Again, that was off a mark of 73, down another £3. There just seems to be a win around the corner waiting to happen for this horse. But in terms of play spot, I wouldn't be wanting to put maximum faith in this horse. The one I would be siding with is Ian Jardine. Again, he runs Havana Party, who ran very well here just a week or so ago when just touched off half a length by a very short odds on favour in Alpine Sierra and I think the form of that race was pretty good they pulled a long way clear of the third and then the fourth the horses in behind were well beaten and you just think a reproduction of that run under Clifford Lee who is probably one of the most underrated jockeys on the flat you just think that he'll be running into the top two places now with just the seven runners I also think Alpha Crew could run better for David O'Meara but it would be Havana Party in the fourth well, it's moving on to the fifth race the 346 and it's a very interesting renewal of this race over the one mile five furlongs I think Havana Party at the top of the market is a very consistent horse one uh, catalog on its penultimate start when I was there one pretty well but it was a weak renewal and then backed it up when just touched off a cataract over the same course and distance again beaten by Robert Johnson I just think this horse is about handicapped correctly which means he should be running into the places off a mark of 56 and it wouldn't be the strongest selection in the world but sometimes you've got to pick do you pick stick with the favourite or do you oppose them and under Jason Hart I think in the fifth race it would be the favourite that should be winning should be winning and probably definitely finishing in the top couple of places the interesting runner is Ahia for Jim Goldie and Paul Mullen who do so well when teaming up that horse has got the basement mark off a mark of 45 and I think she can take a big step forward up Tin Trip as the four year old she's recently been running over the mile and seven furlongs up to up five ish furlongs today a lot better should be expected there then on to the final race the 420 to hopefully land the place but on true blue moon is i'd probably echo what i said for this horse about poets dawn similar same jockey and trainer but you just think this horse is well handicapped but you just want to see a little bit more from this horse to be fully confident in backing this horse in terms of win purposes. I don't think Cat's Bob has a lot in hand off its handicap mark of 64 as well. So the one I'll be siding with again is Ian Jardine trained Rose Bandit who's been running pretty consistently over here off marks of 66. It, off that mark the last twice and it's been beaten but it's been running well and that's one of two runners in the race for Ian Jardine. I've actually forgotten my notes there. I'm actually going with the gloaming who's a bigger price at 12 to 1 but I think this horse will run 
very well. It's one I've been following after I had a very tricky run, didn't have much room at all, was unlucky on its penultimate start, and then, yeah, it was just beaten under half a length that day, and it was probably disappointing next time at Hamilton, but again, wasn't beaten too far off a mark of 56. It again goes off 56 today, and I think this horse should be running into the places. I put in Knight's price as well. Rose Bandit, as I said, that's one I think will run well, but in terms of play spot terms, the gloaming is the one that will hopefully be landing a putty nice place, but if we can manage to get off the mark, we've stuck with a few favourites, with a, we've opposed them in places, which is usually the perfect balance, but as always, bet what you can afford to lose, or even just don't bet at all, have a, co a comment down below of your six selections for the place, but we can see if anyone can back the winner of the Hamilton place, but you might even get a shout out in the next video and maybe some cash prizes down the line as well so thanks a lot for watching guys let me know if you like this kind of video it's a little bit different in terms of the play spot i'm looking and it's already 11 minutes long so if you're still here thanks a lot for watching stay tuned because i will have some previews of the big races coming over the weekend very soon